Complete history of the ancient Egyptian empire. Now that's out. That's a half million views. I love the ancient Egyptians. Can't look it up. The Egyptians believed the most significant thing you could do in your life was to subscribe to Amaranth. <laughs> this is brilliant. This is obviously an iconic image. Taking a we camel ride by it. the pyramids, it surely it encapsulates it the spirit of Egypt. But such an image is completely misleading. Because there weren't any camels here when the pyramids were built four and a half thousand years ago, ancient Egypt is instantly recognisable but all too often, completely misunderstood. The Great Pyramid of Giza, final resting place of King Khufu, over 140 metres from bottom to top. I wonder how long they took to build that. It's about here. It's hard to really get it into words, but we are now entering into the depths of this iconic monument of ancient Egypt. It's about here. It's a very busy iconic monument, though. So well here. And as we set foot on this journey upwards, it's a brilliant metaphor. For do you think they built the inside first and then put the outside over it? Or do you think they had the outside shell and then built the inside? The way that the ancient Egyptian civilization literally rose up from the earth to a real zenith. Come with me and I'll show you something really brilliant. Inside first. Because the pyramids are really only the tip of the iceberg. In this series, I'm going to explore the story of what I consider to be the world's greatest civilization. More than 4,000 years of history that has shaped our world and left unmistakable marks that can still be read today. These carvings in the rock reveal an amazing story about the beginnings of Egyptian life. It's a 19,000 year old picture gallery, complete with its own hippo. Back line, very short tail, hind legs, belly line. The hippo art. <laughs> And uh, the mouth is shown. Hippo is smiling, but then again, the hippo is always smiling. To sit here and imagine Egypt's earliest nomadic people passing right through this spot and portraying on these very rocks the animals that they saw all around them. Human figures and boats joined the animals as the carvings became stranger and stranger. But these carvings are also the earliest glimpse of the amazing things to come. These I are can't the wait of until like ancient Egypt. a few thousand years from now, they find a bunch of furry and they're like, what did it mean? Anyone know why they made these strange drawings? Well, ancient Egypt. <laughs> we know that in the very earliest times, their gods resembled familiar things, the world around them, elements of nature and certainly animals. And over time, the animals, their forms, their shapes, their characteristics were distilled down into this sort of divine figure. Each one worshipped for a different quality. In the case of the ram, they were worshipped for their procreative powers. In the case of the cow, for their nurturing, motherly instincts. Then, of course, you've got rather different creatures, the dangerous creatures, the ones that lived on the edges of the Egyptian world, the lions, the crocodiles, the jackals. But it wasn't just about finding the appropriate What divinity. if we have it wrong? It was they about didn't gaining power them. over them. It was about being thankful for the them. The goddess like Sekhmet the was animal. a ferocious lioness and the bringer of death to humans. On so many levels, the Egyptians were trying to tap into nature to affect the way that nature then in turn affected them. Well, they're living off the land, right? To them, death wasn't the end of life, but a new beginning, a transformation from the world of the living into an everlasting afterlife. And such a belief would shape Egypt's most mysterious practice and my favorite subject, mummification. Mommies. Although the origins of this enigmatic tradition are only now becoming clearer, the burial of their dead had a strong significance from the very earliest times. Small bone and ivory labels like these, which have been dated to around 3250 BC. The originals are probably the size of, of a postage stamp, and you can see that each one is engraved with images of animals, of birds, of plants and so forth. And each one is pierced for suspension to a chest or pottery vessel, taxes? which would have contained oil, linen, grain. And it's thought that these symbols represent the regions that produced these commodities, which were then brought here to Abydos. Now, isn't it interesting that the world's earliest writing wasn't developed to express some great outpouring of emotion or express grand passion? It was simply a means of calculating taxes. Pay your taxes, these, these symbols pyramids don't soon build became themselves. sophisticated. Taking the form of a giant ceremonial cosmetic palette, this is an exact copy of the original Nama palette. Whoa, and however idealized and embellished, 
It depicts the pivotal moment when the southern King Nama defeated his northern enemy. Nama himself remains the first king of a united Egypt. And what this means is that the whole of the country is now united under one man's rule. He is setting himself up quite literally as the god king, as the one central figure at the very pinnacle of the pyramid that forms Egyptian Pharaoh. society. Pharaoh. And Pharaoh. from him, everything else flows. Got a condom what on made ancient, <laughs> ancient Egypt is all here. Bowling pin the head. art forms, the forms of religion, and even the world's first writing, hieroglyphic script. This is the name of Nama. The catfish? No. And the chisel? Mer. No. Mer. Striking the catfish. catfish? I knew As it. the first king of Egypt, Nama is protected by the cow goddess Hathor. Do we have anything this palette now? is you Egypt's mean, earliest anything? historical document. We're watching historical videos. It's the blueprint it's not like I'm out of here how touching every kids. future fair. It's been every un it's man been in the whole world is watching. I know you're a virgin, Chris, but trust me, there are more than just 2.4 thousand virgins in the world. Okay. For the next 3,000 years, not that unique, every bro. one of Egypt's subsequent rulers will try and link themselves to Egypt's first pharaoh. This five hectare site once housed workshops, bakeries, a tool making facility, and a fish processing area. For this was an integrated Damn, they were sufficient in it. of over 8,000 people. They're city who planners. Even had their own medical care. Ahead of their time. Wanted to achieve more than man, la man labor could do without machinery. Statues, maybe granite columns. We find tools out here. I actually hate okay. deserts. I think they're so ugly and barren. Is it this one or that one? I think they're cool, the, the but I don't think they're beautiful. Oh, so this is all right. So if I, if I sat down here, like, I would hate to live there. there. It'd be in, it's interesting sand. to visit, but and then I'm, I'm like, nah, I'm done. Half a meter of sand. So, oh, this is nice. Yeah. I keep my eye on you now. That's right. You can see me <laughs> if I got up in the night and I tried to sneak out to go someplace. I, I, I like greenery, I like water. Here All things site. deserts typically the lag. Data Shade. I don't like American there. deserts really either. Well forget the jewels, forget the gold. Egypt's real treasure was in here. And it's the first time I've ever been in here without crowds and crowds of other people. And speaking now, the sound of the voice reverberating around immediately takes you back four and a half thousand years to the day of the funeral to the sacred words the priest would have chanted to revive the soul of the god king it's miraculous it's a wonderful spectacular place that affects every sense visually audibly it stinks it's it's, it's beyond words really. it affects your nose i think i probably a lot talking well, like dead people in here and piss in batch this is Ancient Egypt beginning to suffer. She looks, her face looks disgusted the, the whole time. That makes me think it has to smell. She just doesn't want to say it because it sounds disrespectful. And it smells like shit in here. Subscribe to Amaranth.